Alrighty, what's up everybody? Peter Gilmore here in my PJs. Back with another video right here on the Peter Gilmore YouTube wrestling channel. YouTube.com slash Peter Gilmore. I gotta get my collar right and it looks like shit, but it is what it is. Back you again with another video right here on Peter the Peter Gilmore YouTube wrestling channel. YouTube.com slash Peter Gilmore. Thank you all for watching this video. Make sure you like this video. Hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to all my other channels as well down below in the description box. And as always, friend me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and tap that bell, turn on all my notifications so you never miss an upload. That's it. Do it, fuckers. Alright. Make it something looking sexy. Hair's kind of messed up. It is what it is. I worked today, so. Just came out of the shower, so. It is what it is. Alright, on this very late. Wednesday night, January the 29th, 2020, or if you're watching from somewhere else, January the 30th, 2020, ready? At the end of January, this year's going to go whoosh, by really quickly, and uh, this weekend starts the beginning of February, we've got leap year this month, well, no, next month, so 29 days of February, so it'll be an actual month, but it is what it is. So get ready for February. Valentine's Day is coming up in a couple 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 weeks. So hope you all bought your lovely uh, significant other some candy or doing something for Valentine's Day. I'm actually uh, trying to go to Atlantic City. I'm trying to finalize my uh, my room and everything, and uh, get some money saved up so we can get the bus the uh, the bus ticket down there. I'm taking the car. Cause a little out of commission as it is already, but it is what it is. I'm going down there, have a nice time, a nice, lovely R and R vacation away from the hustle and bustle, work and all that other crap. We'll see what happens with that, and I'll vlog about Valentine's Day and my uh, weekend on uh, the Gilmore Chronicles, and then uh, do after well a couple of days after that I'll do my NXT po Takeover Portland review. That's later on in the in a couple weeks. We'll get that. But right now, right now, you're all sitting down or standing up or whatever you're doing, because it is time for your late night. It's your very late night. AEW Dynamite review for January the 29th, 2020, from Cleveland, Ohio, the home of the rock and roll. Hall of Shame. Fuck the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Fuck everybody who's in there too. Except for the metal acts. Everybody else besides Whitney Houston, everybody else sucks. Besides well, Whitney Houston and Biggie Smalls. Everybody everybody else that in there is in like rap or hip hop, fuck them. Should be all about rock and roll, heavy metal. Classic rock, whatever. And Judas Priest should have went in this year. And Iron Maiden. But all we got was Nine Inch Nails. Uh, and uh, the Doobie Brothers. I think somebody else I might have missed, but... We get that. Whitney Houston and Toys B.I.G. went in. That was, that was nice. But not until Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Hip Hop Hall of Fame I would be okay with, but you know. Rock and roll? Not really rock and roll. But they'll just induct anybody that like the WWE Hall of Fame. Just induct anybody like Alicia Fox. Oh, I heard Nikki and Bria pregnant. I knew I forgot to pull out on time. Damn. I'm gonna be a father. Fuck. Fuck! At least it's not John Cena's. Fuck you, Cena. Fuck you. I digress. Anyway, let's get into AEW. Let's talk about our real topic of discussion, not some crap about the sp not the about the Bella Sluts being pregnant. Alicia Fox getting into the Hall of Fame. Let's talk about AEW Dynamite this week. Coming from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, it was a pretty decent show. Not the best show. It was a little bit of a step down from the last two weeks of action. Uh. We had, a, we had uh, John Moxley on the show. 
uh, with an interesting ending to the show. We had Cody on the show with Arn Anderson taking on Kip Sabian at SCU on the show. Uh, we had the Young Bucks to sweep me for the love of God. And we had them on the show. MGF was on the show. Myla Rose was on the show. We had a lot of stuff on this show. And like I said, it was a pretty decent show. Not like the last couple weeks, but still, pretty decent show. I think the ratings will uh, show that. I think, I don't, I didn't, I don't. My DVR fucked up tonight, so I had to watch AEW on uh, WatchWrestling.in. Got to watch NXT tonight as well, uh, which I'll do probably uh, later tonight or early tomorrow. And then I'll do my NXT review tomorrow when I get home from my errands. That. And uh, and talk about Alicia Fox. I meant to do the rant so uh, a couple, few days ago, and I've been neglecting to do it. So, But I will do it tomorrow. Talk about uh, Alicia Fox being in the Hall of Fame, even though the WWE hasn't announced it. Hmm. I wonder why. Not really official. I think uh, these websites are talking out of their ass. They're thinking the Bella Sluts were going to be in the Hall of Fame. Now they're thinking Alicia Fox. Who's next? Is that Stacey Keebler? Anyway. But, like, yeah, that's enough about that. Well, blah, 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 blah. That's all I gotta say about that. So, AEW Dynamite starts with a with a video package of what happened last week. Uh, with John Moxley becoming the number one contender to the AEW title. He won it on the Jericho Cruise over Pac. Uh... Yeah, MJF get thrown into the pool by the Young Bucks. And uh, some other stuff happened on that cruise. If you missed it, uh, go watch it again. Uh, that's all I can say about that. So we start off with that. We had uh, the usual trio of Jim Ross, Excalibur, and Tony Schiavone. Giovanni, Baloney, whatever you want to call him. On commentary. And we start off with the one-eyed wonder... John Moxley, or as Justin Roberts said, John Moxley. I say better than him. I should get the damn job. Sign me up, AEW. Cody, Tony Khan, call me. You know, I do. I do a great job for AEW. And you know, they got a new interviewer named Lexi. Lexi, Lexi? No, not just Lexi. But we get that. I'll talk about that a little bit. So Moxley arrives through the crowd. It's all the uh, the face heat or the face pop. I call it that. It says it was around the time he got stabbed in the eye that he realized the fun and games were over, and that Revolution he will he will face Jericho for the AEW title. Uh, he says Jericho is the final obstacle on his way to the top of the mountain. But he has more than Jericho to deal with. He has to heal. He has to deal with the entire inner circle. Uh, he says he's done things in the past. He stole Ray's mask. What? Well, punched a woman. I forgot who he punched. Well, I think I think Jericho did that. Jericho stole Ray's mask at one point. It's a lengthy career. He punched Shawn Michaels' wife. He Falcon punched her. <sighs> that was bad. Uh, but he knows, he knows he's no hero, role model, or saint. He lives by a code that money... And championships can't buy. Is Jericho a liar and manipulator and a bully? It's bullies. At Revolution, he will look down the barrel of the gun and won't hesitate. He will take Jericho out and take the championship from him. And it's not a damn thing that he can that Jericho can do about it. He says he's going to have to watch his back. Instead of waiting, he wants to whip Jericho's ass right now. So he calls Jericho out. Jericho comes out. Self. Now. And it says Moxley earned a spike to the eye because all he had to do was join him in the inner circle. And now he's a busted up, cracked up Captain Jack Spellow. Spellow. Yeah, kind of. He doesn't have the hat and doesn't have the uh, wig and all that other stuff he has. I have the wig. I mean, even I, even I, and I could pull it out, but I don't know where it is. It's, it's somewhere in this mess of a house. But um, maybe one day I'll wear it. Maybe for Halloween if I find it. Maybe if Rosa can find it for me. Anyway. Calls him a, a, John, a Jack Sparrow ripoff. He calls him stupid. Then he, then he makes fun of his mom. 
And T's is giving her a call, but he's not going to apologize since it's Moxley's fault. And he asks if you want, he's like, you want to challenge me? You can't even blink with both eyes, but if you want to fight, go to hell. So. And he says Cleaver doesn't deserve it, and he always, and he always travels with the inner circle. They come out, Jake Hager, Santana Ortiz, and Sammy Guevara, they come out. Uh, so Mox is like, one, two, Moxie says all five of them, but he won't, he won't walk into a 5-on-1 beatdown. He was born in Ohio, and he does the O-H-I-O. Can't. And I, I thought they, oh, I thought OVE was coming out for a second. I was like, oh, you guys friends in Ohio? Uh, we all know somebody's from Ohio. Miz, Dolph Ziggler, you know. Actually, the Miz, Miz is from Cleveland. I think Dolph's from Cleveland as well. I'm not, well, Dolph's from Cleveland, I know that. You know, he resides in uh, Hollywood, Florida, or something like that. Um, like I said, Miz, they, they could have brought Miz and, Miz and Dolph there, and, you know, team up with Moxley, I don't you know. But OVE could have been a much better, and, you know, even though TNA and AEW not having any talent issues, but it would have been nice to have OVE on the show, you know, Sammy Callahan just going berserk with John Moxley. That would be an interesting dream match I would love to see. Mox, I don't even know if this happened, though. I, I have to look that up. But Moxley and Sammy Callahan going at it? Woo, boy. That would be a match to see. I would love to see it. See it. If it, if it happened already, I would love to see it. And uh, so, is the entire arena as a backup. So he heads up the ramp. Jericho calls him stupid. And then he says uh, that Santana Ortiz brought some help with them from New York. And five thugs come out. I don't know. Must have been like indie wrestlers or are they actual friends of Santana Ortiz? They come out. And now Mo and then Moxie looks in the camera and is like, 10? Perfect ten. Uh, so it's ten on one now. So they head down the ramp. Moxley headbutts and DDTs Ortiz into the stage. Then he charges the crowd of dogs. Atlas security and regular security have to f have to fend them off. Referees come out. And uh, Mox, they have to like pull him apart a bunch of times. Moxley kept going at him. But it, and then uh, eventually Moxley heads out through the crowd to a humongous pop. So, pretty good work from uh, Jericho and Moxley. They're working well together. Uh, the the storyline's been pretty good so far. And uh, hype's going good. This is what you'd like to see from a wrestling company. You know, they have a main storyline. Build it up, you know, with some, some some great promos, some back and forth beatdowns. You know, tells a great story. This is what... Jericho and Moxley have been doing for the last month and month and change. You know, ever since Moxley uh, beat, beat Kenny Omega, and then he he uh, easily said, "I'm coming for Jericho. I'm coming for the belt." Now, Moxley's been a house of fire. Then he got stabbed in the eye because he didn't join the the inner circle, even though he then uh you know he he hit. Jericho with the bo bottle of the bubbly. Then what does he get for it? He gets stabbed in the eye. And then he becomes number one contender. Now starts setting up uh, over the next uh, three, uh, th four weeks, next month. See what happens each and every week uh, leading up to the pay per view. It's going to be pretty good. I think the match itself at Revolution is going to be pretty good. Uh, but we'll see what happens when we get there. So it was a pretty good segment. I gave it two and a half out of five stars. And it was a pretty good promo from both men. And that was pretty much all I got to say about that. And we move on. All right, then we get a video of Maxwell, Jacob Friedman, MJF, and Warlow going into a shop meeting with uh, Ali, me, and uh, the Blade. Who are out of character? All three of them are out of character. And he gives them a he gives them a uh, envelope full of money, and them off basically to hit all the young bucks, to hit on the young bucks. And then uh, they go they transition into them being in character. 
that was nice. So we'll see what happens with that as we get to match number one on the program. Young Bucks, Nick and Mac Jackson taking on the Butcher and the Blade with Ali the Bunny at ringside. We had MJF and Warlow uh, on the commentary table. Well, MJF was on commentary. And uh, he had some quirks. You know, he, he mentioned uh, Excalibur's $5 suit. I thought that was funny. But uh, we get that. So we start the match off with Matt and the Butcher. The Butcher was overpowering him. Uh, to begin the match, Nick tags in with a missile drop kick, and they double team the butcher, and then the blade comes in. They work him over with some more double team moves. Matt tags in, they double team blade, and they hit a double drop kick. The butcher cuts him off. Nick takes out the butcher, and then hits a super kick. And then um, Ali trips up Nick as the butcher cross buys him on the floor. Ow. Uh, the blade falls with a with a suicide plancha. And Matt, they isolate Nick for a while. Uh, at one point, the Blade hit the Doctor Bomb for a near fall. Nick fires back, fights off both of them, runs them together. Gets the hot tag to Matt. In like a house of fire and hits a high cost body. Some strikes. Takes out the Butcher and then hits sliced bread. Aid. Also top hits a icy looking CM Punk like elbow. Or oh, Shawn Michaels style elbow because it looked the same. Uh, connects for a near fall. Nick comes in, and they hit the assisted senton on the ropes for a near fall. And then everybody's in the ring. The Bucks hit the super kicks to the butcher. And then they they had the blade in position for the melter driver. Boom, that hits, and they get the one two three, and they get the win. A pretty decent match. I gave it three out of five stars. Not the best Bucks match I, uh, of all time, but you know. And uh, that was that. And then after the match, the Butcher and Blade attack until Kenny Omega makes the save. And then right behind him was Adam Page drinking a beer. He's like slaughtering to the ring. And then he gets on the apron, hands the beer. He's like, hold my beer. And then he does the buckshot lariat, laying out the blade. That was pretty funny. Uh, then he gets his beers like, I'm out of here. And then he leaves. Adam Page is the man. I'm sorry. I'm a big Adam Page mark. And I can't wait till his heel turn. I can't wait till he turns on Kenny and the Bucks. It's going to be legend. Wait for it. Very legendary. It's going to be great. And that the match with that eventually does happen, most likely a double or nothing, too. Between uh, Adam Page and Kenny Omega. It's going to happen. Well, be, maybe before then. Maybe on TV. Uh, I don't know when they're not actually... They're transitioning into the heel turn. But I think it's going to come... Probably at Revolution. When they uh, defend the tag belts. And they lose them. Probably to the Bucks. But we'll see what happens with that. You never know what's going to happen in the next month or so. But I think they're going to play it out for the next month. And uh, we'll see what happens with that. But Adam Page was a fucking star in this, you know. Hold my beer! Boom! Buck shot Lariat. That was nice. It would have nice, been nice to have him hit uh, that uh, stuffed power driver. I forgot what he called it. Last Revelation, I think he called I forgot what he called it. I'm such, an, I'm such an Adam Page mark, I don't know what his finishing move is besides the Buck shot Lariat. Uh, I forgot what, what it was in Ring of Honor. But this is what it is. But Adam Page is the, is the man, and we'll see what happens with the Bucks, the Elite, and Adam and uh, Kenny Omega and Adam Page over the next couple of weeks, leading up to Revolution, or maybe a title match, but we'll see. And we move on from there. All right, then we get to match number two. We got the Native Beast, Nyla Rose taking on Big Swole. Uh, Nyla Rose is now the number one contender to Rio's title. Probably be uh, contested maybe at Revolution. I think if it does happen at Revolution, Nyla's going to win it. Hold it for a very long time. I mean, she held the WOW women's title, the Warriors of Wrestling title, for you stupid people at home. Uh, she held it for like almost a year and lost it to Nikki Adams. She won it from Nikki Adams and then lost it to Nikki Adams. And then never really got it back. I think she got it. Maybe I think she got it back. I don't remember. I gotta 
look that up. But no, I think she's a one or two time. No, she's a one time champion. She didn't win it back. But she did face Nikki Adams. She faced uh, Soraya Knight. That's Paige's mom for you stupid people at home. And she she defended the WOW women's title in Japan. First time ever for that. So. And Rose, I think, is going to become women's champion by uh, by the time we get to Revolution. I mean, out of Revolution. But we'll see what happens with that. So we get to the match. Match was okay. It wasn't that bad. Uh, Swole used her speed and quickness to, to slow down Nyla. Nyla at the start. Fouls with a flatliner for a near fall. Uh, Nyla cuts her up with a clothesline. Where then Swole dumps her to the floor with a, with a uh, kick. Wilson cuts her off, slams her into the apron. Whips her to the barricades. Swole fires back, but hits the ring post. Ow. And we come back from break. Nyla's in control. She uh, goes for a charge and missed it. Swole hits some knee strikes and then knocks in a front chancery. Guillotine, whatever you want to call it. Uh, neither escapes, but Swole hits a big bicycle kick, knocking Nyla down. Follows with some strikes, and then a headbutt, and then another one. And Insiguri follows that, and then she hits a... Get over here! Uh, style. I mean, uh, slingshot cutter. Basically the same move you would see from, like, uh... From Leo Rush. That guy named Jordan Miles did it. They called it Get Out. Yeah, come, uh... Come over here. Get over here! Uh, I miss playing Mortal Kombat. Anyway, uh, so all counts into a flatliner, a really sloppy looking flatliner. But uh, Nyla comes back with a sloppy looking spear. Yeah, I hate to say it. Uh, then she hits the beast bomb, the, the uh, sit down power bomb. Finishes Swall off. She gets the win to continue on her dominance. And she has to win. Match gave 2.25 out of 5 stars. Uh, Swole put up a good challenge, but Nyla overcame it and beat her. And she continues on her road to, uh, on the road to Rio. Not Rio de Janeiro, but the road to a match with Rio. Coming up, probably at the pay-per-view, but we'll see what happens over the next month or so. But we'll see what happens. And that's it. So like I said, 2.25 out of 5 stars. All right, then we get to match number three. We have Cody versus Kip Sabian with the lovely Penelope Ford at ringside. Uh, Coach Arn Anderson was at ringside with Cody. Uh, decent match. Not the greatest Cody match I've seen of all time, but I think it was this his worst match that he's had. You know, he's going up against a guy he never faced and Kip Sabian. And uh, Sabian gave him his all. No, he, ta he attacks with a drop kick and then a gut buster. And then Cody cut him off and dumps him to the floor. Saving then shoves Arn Anderson on the outside. And the referee has to stop it. Back in, Cody follows with a drop kick. And then Saving goes outside. Pulls Cody to the floor. And Penelope Ford gets knocked down by accident by Cody. It's a trap! And Saving attacks him. And then Saving and Penelope make out. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, Joey Janela's ex-girlfriend for you stupid people at home. Uh, they start making out, like, like, Edge and Lita, whatever you want to call it. Any, any couple you, you, that you can think of in wrestling. Uh, they start making out, uh, and Sabian leads the boost to Cody, follows up some strikes. Cody fires back, Sabian fakes a knee injury. Uh, then gets checked on by the doctor. He springboards in and attacks Cody. As we go to break, come back, both men are down. Cody fires up with some strikes and hits a slap slam. And then Penelope Ford distracts him, but Cody hits a disaster kick. And Penelope distracts the ref again, but Cody covers for a near fall. And Arn is pissed. Uh, he takes, I think it was Penelope's shoe. And he throws it into the crowd. He starts arguing with the ref. Then he... It was like that to the ref, and he's like, oh shit, what did I just do? And Cody's like, what did you do? I thought he was going to get disqualified, but then the ref tosses him out, and Cody has to, has to tell Arn to get to the back, old timer. Uh, Ford hits Cody with a hurricane on the floor, then he hits a tope suicida, and Joey Janela, who's been having problems with, with uh, 
Kip Sabian and his ex-girlfriend, Penelope Ford, he arrives, he interrupts a, interrupts a, a kiss by uh, both of them, he hits a suicide dive, uh, they go back in, Sabian cuts him off, and then hits an anarchist suplex for a near fall, uh, then he goes up top, he takes Cody up top, he follows him up, looks for a superplex, uh, Cody fights out of it, but Sabian dumps him off the ropes with a, with a, uh, a beal. Uh, Cody comes back with Deathly Hallows into the into the sling into the uh, slingshot Cody Cutter. He hits Crossroads not once, not twice, three times. He went full Nick Gage. That was that was awesome. You know, crowd. You know, Jr. is going on. It's like I can't believe what he's doing. And you know, Tony's like, Oh my! Oh my! Uh, he went full fucking Nick Cage on this guy. And I loved it. I was like, yeah, this is the Cody I want to see. I want to see him do this to MJF at the at the pay-per-view. Even though he's trying to lose. He's losing to MJF. Let's be real here. All those going to get involved. Orange's going to get involved. Probably get beat up. And then in the end, MJF's going to probably hit Cody in the nuts. And he's going to get the fluke win. Let's, let's be real. Come on. There's no way that Cody's gonna win this match. He's getting ten lashes next week uh, on the program from ha ha from ha <coughs> Huntsville, Alabama, Alabama, not near Greensboro, Alabama. As our Forrest Gump once said. But yeah, so he picks up the win. Match gave two and a half out of five stars. Uh, yeah, but he was a machine at the end. And I, I would hate to be MGF right now, going into this next month. We got got the Ten Lashes next week, and then two weeks after that, you got the Steel Cage match in Atlanta with Warlow. Probably gonna be uh, Cody's gonna probably get busted wide open with blood spewing out of his head. But I think he's gonna beat Warlow to get the match with with MGF at Revolution, and then at Revolution he's gonna give it his all but still lose. That's what I think is gonna happen. But you never know. They could change it. But that's it. So, like I said, two and a half out of five stars for that match. And, uh, that's all I gotta say about that. Alright, there we get highlights of last week's horrible Britt Baker promo, where she basically roasted Tony Schiavone, or Shivani. Uh, so we get another interview with Britt Baker and Tony Schiavone. Uh, Britt tells Tony to address him as Doctor. She should have just said, call me Dr. Britt Baker, baby! Take some notes from your fucking boyfriend. I mean, come on. Baby. Uh, says they were the stars of the show last week, and they were trending. Well, she was trending, but Mr. Starbucks held the mic. Oh, uh, Tony Schiavone working at Starbucks. That That is just something else. It is what it is. Uh, she runs down JR for calling off a promo and says never to do it again. Uh, she says JR only likes to talk about her being a dentist and runs down her generation while collecting a big fat paycheck. She tells him to be the legend we grew up on, not a barbecue swilling slob, getting names wrong, and collecting a fat check. Ouch. She is kind of right. He does mess up a lot of the names, especially the, you know, he, he messed up Kurashida's number, uh, name. Uh, Shauna, he gets mess he messes up her name. He messes a lot, a lot of names up. I mean, the dude is 60-something years old. Come on. He's a fucking legend. That's a credit. He's a fucking legend. A Hall of Famer and a legend. And uh, probably one of the best play-by-play -play announcers of all time. Of all time. Forget Golden, Gordon Soli and Keenan and Gorilla Monsoon. He is the GOAT. He is the GOAT of all of play-by-play -play announcing, announcing announcers. He is the GOAT. I'm sorry. He is the GOAT. Fight me about it. If you think Gordon Soli is the man, I, I mean, more power to you. But in my opinion, I think Jim, Jim Ross is the fucking GOAT of play-by-play -play announcing. That's it. The best commentary team, I think, would go to Heenan and and Monsoon. 
but I think a close second would be JR and and uh and Jim Ross. A close second, but I think the all time best play by play color commentary team of all time is and and will ever will be Bobby Heenan and Gorilla Monsoon. That's my opinion, and if you don't like it, well, too bad. And that's that. Uh, so she runs down Rio, tells Tony that he has gingivitis. My old case of gingivitis, and Tony's like, I think I did brush my teeth this morning. And tells him to pick up a toothbrush. <laughs> and she tells Cleveland they finally have a baker they can trust in. Ouch. And in that heel heat... And really dissing the Cleveland Browns because Baker Mayfield's a piece of shit. He is. What did he do? He didn't do anything for Cleveland this year. Not one single solitary thing. And I don't even know how many wins that uh, Browns got. I think they got six wins. Five or six wins. Something like that. Really did a number there, Cleveland. And uh, ODB. ODB. OB, uh. Odell Beckham Jr., OBJ. <laughs> he really had a good season this year, didn't he? And he's going bye-bye. Guess where he might be going? Uh, people saying he might go back to the Giants. Uh, I don't know why. But maybe, I think a lot of people saying he's going to the Raiders. Or uh, any other team. He's a free agent. He could, he could come to San Francisco. I wouldn't mind. With Debo and Emmanuel Sanders and, and freaking Kittle. That would be a, a wicked wide receiver tight end core. Wicked. You know, OBJ is not the same person he was when he was on the Giants. Not the same guy. I, I, I Personally, I wouldn't want him. I wouldn't mind having him, but I, I, in my heart of hearts, I don't want him. But money talks, and you know what else walks. That's BS for you stupid people at home that don't get the analogy. But, yeah. So we get that. So Britt Baker, the number four uh, ranked woman in the in the division, cuts another decent. Uh, it was better than last week. What are you gonna do? It was better than last week. So she's slightly getting better as a heel, heel heat and stuff. And uh, she's gonna take on Yuka Sakazula, something like that. Uh, I'll get the name in a minute. Sakaka, I think it's Yuka Sakakawa. We eat sushi for dinner, yeah. Anyway, how about that? Let's be serious. Uh, so we get that. So I gave that uh, two out of five stars. All right, then we go to a interview with their new interview with Lexi. She interviews the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. And uh, the Bucks said they're back to their winning ways and hope to climb up the AEW tag team division and hopefully earn a tag team title shot. So Kenny's like, like you've been doing that, you've been doing so great. Uh, you do deserve a title shot in the in the foreseeable future. And then Adam Page comes in with another drink. I think he had like, it wasn't I don't think it was beer. I think it was like rum and coke or something like that. Uh, and he glows about being the champions and running his mouth. Like, oh, we I, I, we just got our name plates today. And then he gave uh. I think he gave Matt and Nick their own nameplates. Maybe a, maybe a foretelling situation by Adam Page. Maybe, you know, the Bucks get the belts at Revolution. And then that, that'll be where Adam Page turns on Kenny and the Bucks at the end of the match. You know, everybody, they have a big hug. And then Adam Page's like, fuck you. Beats him up with Buckshot Larius and, and um, the last rights. Oh, that power driver he does. An inverted power driver. We get that. Uh, so Omega tries to make the piece, and he announces that next week it's going to be him and the Bucks and Page taking on the Butcher, the Blade, and two other guys who we found out later are the Lucha Brothers, Phoenix and Pentagon, the man with Zeno, Ghetto. which the 49ers will have at the Super Bowl. Zero. Middle, no fear. Because they will win. That's all I gotta say about that. I saw a guy in the pizza shop today, had a Chiefs hat on. I roasted his ass. I said, hey dude, nice hat. <laughs> Very nice hat, dude. Go Chiefs! I roasted him telling him his team sucks. 
I don't know if he's a fan or he just wears the hat. He just roasted his ass. I didn't care. I just hope the Niners win so I pick up some bigger money and I win the pool. Even more money I can go to uh, my vacation with. See, and get my and when I get my income tax return, even more money. So I can take another vacation. But uh, we'll see what happens with that. So I gave this segment 2.25 out of 5 stars. All right, then we get to our next match. Uh, the former champions, the former tag team champions, Scorpio Sky and Kaz of CU. Christopher Daniels at ringside. Uh, taking on uh, Hybrid 2 at Helgo and Jack Evans. SCU came out in uh, Kobe Bryant shirts. And AEW acknowledged his death and they, you know, gave the condolences, which was pretty nice. I think NXT did that. Well, WWE did that on Sunday at the Royal Rumble. So I don't think they would have done it on, on NXT unless they had a graphic or something like that. Well, somebody came out. Some one of the one of these superstars came out with in a Kobe shirt. So I didn't see. I didn't. I didn't see NXT yet. So that uh, match was match was decent. It was okay. So also with Cass and Helico, and and Helico started grounding and pounding. Cass makes it to his feet. Falls on some arm drags. Takes control. Curls him up for a near fall. Scorpio Sky tags in. They work over uh, over Angelico. And uh, Angelico cuts him off. Tags in Jack, uh, Jack Evans. And they double team on Sky. Sky fights back. Tags in Kaz. And then SCU falls with a double team moves for a near fall. Kaz hits a German. Gets a near fall out of that. As Angelico makes a save. Scorpio Sky comes back in. They start working on the arm of Evans. And Helico sends Sky off the ropes. Evans fouls with a spin kick for a near fall. Then they go to work on Scorpio Sky for a while. And then uh, Scorpio Sky fires back until uh, Jack Evans cut him off and cradles him off for a near fall. Puts him with some strikes, tags in, and Hel and Helico and he covers for a near fall. Evans comes back in, lays the boots to Sky, but Sky counts into a desperation suplex. Then he gets the hot tag to Kaz. He runs wild with some strikes and a drop kick. Then all four men are in the ring. Scorpio gets dumped to the floor. Uh, then Hybrid 2 double team on Kaz. But uh, Scorpio makes the save after hitting a, uh, a pump kick on the outside. He comes in. Uh, he takes out Jack Evans. And then he hit SCU later on Angelico to pick up the win. And get back to their winning ways. So no hangover from last week's, uh, well, two weeks ago's loss to Kenny Omega and Adam Page. They get back. To their winning ways and they start making their climb back up the ladder tag team division and i would think they will get a rematch uh sooner or later uh, i don't think they'll win but we'll see what happens with that and uh, that's pretty much it and uh we'll move on from there so pretty good match i gave it two and a half out of five stars and we move on from there then we get a Dark Order promo saying the Exalted One is upset with Christopher Daniels and warns him they are coming for his family and friends. Ooh. That's not good. I hate to be Christopher Daniels. Yeah. I, I still think he is the Exalted One. I really think it might be Christopher Daniels. I don't think it's Matt Hardy. I think it's, a, I think it's going to be Christopher Daniels turning on SCU, going back to his prophet... Uh, Fallen Angel gimmick. And him and um, Evil Uno and... And, uh, and company will just do a number on the tag team division. They'll win the tag belts from maybe the Young Bucks. Somebody. And just run amok of the tag team division. And probably hold it for a while. And that's it. So we'll see what happens with the Dark Order. Uh, the next, next week or the next coming weeks. And we'll see. All right, then we got an interesting promo from Pac, who cut a Bray Wyatt-style promo. And he is all black and white. Like he's in London or something. I don't know where he is. He's coming down some stairs. Basically talking about Kenny Omega. He says he won't do things on Kenny's schedule. He's going to do them on his schedule. He says next week he's coming for blood. So he looked great. You know, they kind of did a, yeah! With, um, he's showing his face like, ah, stuff like that. He did it pretty well. I, I actually liked it. So I gave this promo 3.25 out of 5 stars. So we'll see what happens with Pac next week. Uh, 
Maybe he'll beat up Kenny Omega, bust him wide open. I don't know. He's coming for blood, so I would think he'll bust Kenny Omega wide open. Or do something. We'll see. So we'll see what happens next week. So like I said, next week, we got Cody taking 10 lashes from MJF. Uh, Ortiz will take on John Moxley after what uh, John Moxley did to him on the stage early in the, in, um, the night. So get that. Britt Baker will take on Yuka Sakasaki uh, in uh, women's action. And then the Bucks, Adam Page, and Kenny Omega will take on the Butcher, the Blade, and the Lucha Brothers in the main event, which should be an awesome main event. But uh, see what happens from, from there. And uh, that's it. All right, then we get to the main event. Of the evening, Chris Jericho, Santana, and Ortiz taking on Private Party and Darby Allen. Pretty good match. Pretty good. Uh, six man tag. We got Jake Hager and Sammy Guevara at ringside. It starts off with Darby Allen and Jericho. I mean, they've had their battle uh, for the AEW title, and Darby Allen almost had the belt won, and then Jericho beat him like uh, a couple months ago. So, um, as Allen attacks, he runs Rollins, and Jericho runs to his corner, tags in Ortiz, Isaiah Cassidy comes in, uh, Ortiz does the old eye poke on our Roddy Roddy Piper, follows with some strikes until Cassidy hits him in insecurity, tags in his partner Mark Queen, and, um, uh, double team, Ortiz, get a cover for a near fall, Ortiz battles back, hits a drop kick, tags in Santana, and they, they go to work. On Marquee, but Marquee cows and runs them together. Tags in Isaiah Cassidy, falls with a cradle for a near fall, then a victory roll for another near fall. Jericho cuts him off, drop his Cassidy to the floor with that springboard drop kick of his vintage Jericho. And then Santana comes in, takes the heat on Cassidy, falls with some rolling suplexes into the LAX delayed suplex exchange spot that Jericho did as well. Uh, so they, they get back in control over Isaiah Cassidy. Uh, fights back, hits a hurricane and, and a drop kick. Tags in a hot uh, Darby Allen. He runs wild, hits a suicide dive, and then a cold red for a near fall. He hits the Last Supper, um, I believe, on um, on 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 Ortiz, and Jericho has to make the save. And then all four men are in the ring. Santana hits a diamond cutter, uh, but Allen comes back with some strikes. Jericho tags in, it's cut off, and Darby picks up a really good near fall, like 2.999999. Uh, then Jake Hager and Sammy Guevara are trying to get Santana and Ortiz on the, um, together. Uh, then Darby Allen goes up top, hits the coffin drop on the on the Jake Hager. Then Marquis hits a Fosbury flop onto, I believe, with Santana. Uh, Cassie Swanton's Jericho for another near fall. And then out of nowhere, Jericho comes back with the Judas Effect elbow. Picks up the win. One, two, three. And they get the win. Santana and Ortiz with Jericho are 3-0. and oh. That's pretty impressive. But I, 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 I think you could have saw them winning the match. I didn't really think Private Party and Darby Allen would get the win. Because since the Ernest Circle is going, uh, running amok in AEW anyway. But match was pretty good. I gave it 3.25 out of 5 stars. And really showed the inner circle's dominance and continued dominance in the ring. Look at that. And then afterwards, the inner circle attack. Attack all of them, laying them out. And Sammy Guevara grabs Darby Allen's skateboard. Air guitars with it a little bit. Then he then he puts it under his throat. Jams the, jams the skateboard into Darby Allen's throat. He busted his windpipe. We don't know. Uh... And Sammy goes to the ropes, and then we see John Moxley come out with a bat. He sting. And he clears the ring, beats up everybody with a bat, except for Jericho. Jericho left. And he stands tall as Jericho and company uh, hightail it out of there. So, pretty decent ending, not bad. Uh, continues the Jericho Moxley feud. And we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, a great ending, all in all. Uh, from AEW. Uh, I said 3.25 out of 5 stars for the match. Pretty good match. Which uh, the Inner Circle won. And we'll see what happens next week with, with Moxley and Jericho and, and uh, the Inner Circle. 
I'll see what happens next week with the Young Bucks, Adam Page, and Kenny Omega as they take on the Lucha Brothers and the Butcher and the Blade. Uh, we got Cody getting 10 lashes. That's going to not be good for Cody. His back's going to be all welted up and bloody and all that other crap. I won't be surprised if Brandy comes out. Stop it! And he's not going to come out. I doubt it. Maybe Arn Anderson comes out and maybe he takes a lash or two. But we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Baker in action against Yuka Sakaz Sakazawa. Should be interesting. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, and we got John Moxley and Tease in uh, one on one action. So it should be a good uh, show next week from Huntsville, Alabama. As we get closer and closer to Revolution at the end of February, about four weeks away. See what happens next week. Show. And see how the ratings go as well. I think AEW might have won this week. Like I said, I didn't watch NXT yet, so I don't know. But I did see some highlights. Adam Cole got put through a table by Tommaso Ciampa. So uh, Ciampa is the next in line to Adam Cole's belt. He will defend it at NXT TakeOver Portland. I don't think he'll win it. I think he'll win it at WrestleMania weekend. And NXT TakeOver Tampa Bay. I think that's when Ciampa will win the belt. I don't, I really don't think... Uh, Adam Cole's gonna lose the belt. I know that Bobby Fish and Kyle Riley will lose the belts to whoever won the Dusty Rhodes American Dream Dust uh, Tag Team Classic, which I think, uh, which I heard was um, the Brosa Weights, Matt Riddle and Pete Fucking Dunn. That should be a good match at Takeover Portland. I think Matt Riddle and, and uh, Pete Dunn will win the win the belts. Hold it for a little while, not too long. I think. And then me, I don't know who's gonna beat them. I don't think it's gonna be Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish getting in their rematch. So I think the Undisputed Era's prophecy is gonna, gonna end. It's gonna blow up in all their faces. Everybody's gonna lose their belts and then get the rematches. They're gonna lose them. And I don't know what's gonna happen the rest of the year. Might go to the main roster by SummerSlam. Who knows? But the prophecy of the Undisputed Era is coming to an end. And I think it's going to be officially over at WrestleMania. But oh, you never know. We'll see what happens. That's I said. So I'll get to NXT tomorrow. And it's fucking hot in here. I got to load the heat. Uh, I got to take this sexy shirt off. But, <laughs> but we'll see what happens with that. So, so AEW was pretty good. I gave it 7.5 out of 10 stars. A little bit down from last week. Not too much down, but a little bit down. And like I said, we'll see what happens with the ratings as they come in probably over the next couple of days. And um, I'll probably talk about it on my SmackDown review, uh, which I'll probably do Monday. Because I'll be out of, out of town at my mother from another mother's house watching the Super Bowl. Uh, so I won't be back until late Monday. Early, early or late Monday. So, uh, I'll try to get the review up probably Monday, Monday or late Tuesday. So, get that. So, we, uh, the SmackDown review will be late. What are you going to do? I might, I'll try to get it up Friday night if I can, if I have enough energy. But I got to work the next day. So, keep your fingers crossed. We'll see what happens with that. So, that's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions regarding AEW or anything in the world of professional wrestling or anything in the world of current events, uh, music, movie, sports, uh, you want to talk about the impeachment trial, I really don't care. Uh, anything else in the world of, anything else in the world you want to ask me, sex, anything, I don't really care. Open form, anything you want to ask me, put it down below in the comment section of this video or any one of my future videos. Or hit me up via Facebook, just type in Peter Gilmore, you'll find me somewhere on Facebook. But your best bet is hit me up via Twitter at my Twitter link, which is down below in the description box. At Gilmore Inc. is my handle. Hit me up with a tweet, hit me up with a DM. I'll uh, save your questions and we'll eventually get to a Q&A. Hopefully this year. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Once again, 7.5 out of 10 stars for AEW Dynamat tonight. And I'll do my NXT review. And I'll talk about uh, the possibility. I don't, like I said, I don't know if it's official. The WWE hasn't made it official yet. That Alicia Fox is the next person in line. The next person inducted into the Hall of Fame. I'll talk about that a little bit. And that'll probably be it for my videos tomorrow. And then 
Like I said, Friday I might do my SmackDown review. But we'll see. So thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great rest of your late Wednesday night. And if you're here in the Northeast, if not, and if you're in the West Coast, or good morning if you're in, in China or Japan or in, Swaz uh, in New Zealand or wherever you, wherever you are. Wherever you are, have a good day, a good night, a good whatever. And that's it. So thank you for watching. I'm Peter Gilmore signing off. Peace out. Rock on. And if you're not down with that, well, that's too bad. Get the fuck off my channel if you don't like it. But if you do like the, like the video, hit that subscribe button on this channel and all my other channels, which are in the description box. Give them, give them love. Give them, some, give them your love. Give them your support. And hopefully we can get to uh, some milestones on the channels. Hopefully we get to 1,200 on this channel. Lost a little bit. Lost a lot of subs on this channel. We were at 1,200 at one point. Uh, but now we're down to about, we're close to 1170 right now, so hopefully we get more subs in the near future, get up to 1200, then hopefully on a road to 1500 subscribers, but it's all up to you guys with word of mouth and sharing my videos all over the internet, asking questions, getting, getting your recognition, and that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching. I'm out. Peace, bitches.